Thank you very much. We are back, and today we are looking at uh, two great personalities, man, and um, what you are doing for Mother Ghana. And it's, it's just amazing. It's just mind-boggling. There's this young chap, young man, and he won what we call the President's Engagement Prize in the University of Pennsylvania, and that was for an amount of $150,000. What did he do with this? No, he didn't go and buy a Range Rover and, uh, <laughs> and, and a V7 to come and show off in Ghana. No, he came to Ghana to build a hospital, a community clinic. Take a look at this. I'm Shadrach Frimpo, an international student from Ghana, majoring in biology in the College of Arts and Sciences. I am from Takwa Ramai, a small rural village in the western region of Ghana. Poverty and rural traditional superstitious beliefs makes it so that many parents do not place emphasis on educating girls. Consequently, you have so many girls who are not enrolled in school and do find themselves on the streets in major cities in Ghana. There, they fall prey to sexual abuse and sexually transmitted diseases. With the President's Engagement Prize, I will be establishing a community school for girls and a medical clinic in my village. These facilities will not only serve young girls and people in my village, but also people in the surrounding seven villages. I met Shadrach just a short while ago. He told me about what he wanted to accomplish in his village in Ghana, and it was a, an amazing combination of health and, and education for young girls and health for his community. And I said, okay, this kid is really special. This is a kid I gotta get involved with. Shadrach Frimpong is inspirational. No member of his family even graduated from high school. He has really taken from his education what it is to make a difference in your own hometown. And in his case, he's going to make a revolutionary difference. The success of this project will rely on the support of students from Penn School of Architecture who will work to design the building, as well as students from other schools who will also join us in Ghana to volunteer at a clinic and a school for girls. My role in Shadrach's project is to lead a team of undergraduate students in architecture to Ghana to assist in the construction of the buildings. Building anything in an environment like this will be, for our students, absolutely unique. The construction techniques will all be local, indigenous techniques. Our students will be learning them for the first time, working with the villagers day by day in the construction of these buildings. It's a wonderful opportunity for undergraduate students to see some other part of the world and to take part in doing something for other people. If he can pull this off, and I'm sure he can, this is a game changer because it'll show his village that young girls can have the same level of education, the same level of achievement, get them out of their traditional roles if they want. Who knows where this can end up? Well, we could see some of these young girls being in our medical school, you know, in the future. This project will have an enormous impact. I think Shadrach will emerge as a leader in Ghana, building hospitals, health clinics, and producing a model for the delivery of health care. I think we'll hear a lot from Shadrach in the decades ahead. Folks, I'm so happy and I feel honored and privileged to have this guy in the house right now. Put your hands together. Show some love for Shadrach Frimpo. <laughs> right here, Shadrach. Take a seat right here. Okay. Well, he's in the house. And we're going to have an engagement. After that, though, I also have a great Ghanaian, uh, Patrick Uria, president of Ashes University. He's also coming up. But stick around. After the commercial break, we'll be right back. We're just getting started. The KSM Show will be right back. The KSM Show. Sandra, how are you doing, man? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Ah, the hungry head, man. <laughs> I'm inspired by, by great works from great people. As young as you are, I'm very, very impressed. Um, first of all, tell me about this award. It was $150,000? Yes, please. How did you earn it? What did you do to? So I think um, the University of Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. which your own daughter, Nanaya, <laughs> also <laughs> attended, um, you know, it's all about empowering students, you know, so that they can actually take their education mm -hmm. right after graduation to actually make an impact in mm. the world. Mm. And so they look at a couple of things. Obviously, your academics have to be a bit up there. 
And then... Um, it has to be very up there. Yeah. You know you're being <laughs> modest. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, it has to be up there. And then, I mean, once it's up there, they look at a track record. Are you someone who can, you know, be given uh, a good amount of money to just go right into the world and actually lead a change? Or you are someone who needs some time? And so with that, they look at your track record. And so I was thankful enough, all through college, based because of my background, mm -hmm. you know, I was working on a couple of initiatives with other African students. Mm. So I think that gave uh, the, 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 the launch pad for me to get to that level. Wow, yes. wow. Let, let me rewind a bit even before, then we'll come back. But uh, you were born in uh, Takwa, Bremen? Yes, please. Really? That's where you grew up? Yes, please. Wow. Tell me a little bit, who, who are your parents? My mom is Miss Cecilia, Mrs. Cecilia Osei from Paul, and okay. my dad is uh, Mr. Thomas Osei from Paul. Okay. And, uh, you know, they're Church of Pentecost folks. Mm -hmm. And it's a very interesting dynamic. You know, my dad is originally from Kumau in the Ashanti region, mm -hmm. went there to go and farm his cocoa. Uh, he, you know, after, I think back in those days, he, they couldn't, you know, further his education mm. to even high school level. Okay. So he went there to go and farm the cocoa. And my mom is from the village. I so see. they met. And that's so, how they met. Yeah, that's how they met. And so, I mean, that's, that's how, I, that's how um, I came about. You know, I'm a product of <laughs> I like that. That's how you came about. Yeah, that's how I came about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a product of my parents. And um, uh, my parents are pretty uh, hardworking people. You know, my mom is a charcoal seller. She still sells wow. charcoal. Wow. Um, and then my dad is also a peasant farmer, you know, mm -hmm. tomatoes mm -hmm. and a couple mm -hmm. of cocoa here and there. So... Um, we grew up in the village. I typically was born on the farm, you know. Mm. So, you know, in the rural areas, what you typically have is a lot of people, when they are farming the cocoa, they create their own small shed under the cocoa tree. Mm. So, I was born actually at Dr. So. And Dr. So is one of the suburbs of Takwa Bear Mine. I see. The people in Ta Dr. So are originally from Takwa Bear Mine. Mm -hmm. So, I say I'm from Takwa Bear Mine. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, as Takwa Bermain is the epicenter, over time, when my, my, my dad said, well, let's try and also move to our own level of city, even though Takwa Bermain is a very village and didn't have electricity at the time, we have to move from being alone under the cocoa tree to join the village. I see. And yeah, so, um, I mean, growing wow. up, no electricity, no running water, mm. but aye, it's a very simple life, and mm -hmm. then we had to do with mm -hmm. what we had, yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that's th those were the roots. Yeah. That's your foundations. Yes, Fantastic. Please. And then from there? Yeah, so from there, um, continued at high school at Opokuari School. Mm -hmm. Very lucky. What happened is that I think at some point in my family's life, my dad realized that we can't, if we all continue to stay in the village, we are messed up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so um, he started thinking of new ways to, you know, push us to Kumase. Wow. And so I found my way in Kumase. Pukuari. And then Good ended up at Pukuari School. Yeah. Yes. Wow. I, I, I know we are your rivals. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still, a, it's still a very good school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even though you prepare guys usually don't want to accept. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, we are better. I said you are good. <laughs> <laughs> well, well. You're good. I said good too, you know. But anyway, no. But no, no. Pukuari is a very good school. We're a great yeah. school. Yeah. We're a great school. Yeah. Greater than Prempe. Well. A bit. <laughs> well. But so great. So then after Pokuari, what happened? Yeah, after Pokuari, so I think what actually turned out to be um, a curse actually turned out to be a blessing in disguise. Mm. I was about to graduate from Pokuari. My teachers knew I was doing well in my classes. Um, and here was the case that they were worried. Uh, if they didn't do something quick, you know, I would just graduate. And just like many kids from rural communities. So I went to Pokuari to a Ghana Cocoa Board Scholarship. Mm. So I was on... I was on tuition. Mm. Cocoa Board Scholarship is, covers only tuition. That mm. means for my accommodation and my meals and stuff like that, I had to be usually doing vacations, be working on the streets of Asokwa and Edum, wow. all that place, selling PK, PK and handkerchief. PK and handkerchief. Yeah. Wow. You know, what these boys do on the streets. Wow. So doing vacations, wow. that's what I was doing to support mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. And my teachers, you know, you come to school, you know it's a boys' school. Boys will give you names. So I, I, some what of my friends... What do they call you? P.K. Hanky. Oh, P.K. Hanky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and wow. and I, I had a way of saying ice wetter. That, you know, I just twist it. Ice yeah. wetter. Yeah. And you said ice wetter too. Yeah. You said ice wetter. Yeah, you know. <laughs> uh, during vacation, I had to do whatever I could do mm -hmm. to make sure that when school is back in, in place, I could also be normal just like everyone. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. my, my, my teachers knew that. Mm -hmm. And that was their biggest concern. That, hey, 
this guy, if we don't do something when he graduates, he might actually have to go back to the village. Mm. And all that potential, all the first we've been seeing him, you know, placing mm. in class. Mm. So that well, was Academically, you were like on top of the class, eh? Yes, for, for, for the most mm -hmm. part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then so my counselor stepped in and he said, well, you know, I, I, you know, we're my Catholic fathers, they usually travel a lot. And he said, um, well, you are a library prefect. I was a library prefect at Okokwa, the main library prefect. So why not let us go check out some of these books that the college board usually sends out? I read about it. The first time I read that American colleges can actually give a full ride. I mean, I remember the first time telling my dad, it's like, you're crazy. Even our own Ghana universities, you know, <laughs> almost my scholarship. And America. Now America. Oh, dear, girl. <laughs> wow. And so I wrote it, and God was good. I got a very good score, you know, in the upper ranges of Fantastic. 2000. Fantastic. Yeah, percentiles were good. Long story short, ended up at the University of Pennsylvania. Wow. Yeah. Show some love. Man. That's so amazing. You know, I mean, here's, here's a guy that was selling handkerchiefs and piki and ice, ice water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, who ends up at the University of Pennsylvania, UPenn, gets an award of uh, a prize uh, of $150,000, and then comes back to Ghana to the community where he started to build something. Amazing, man. God bless you, man. Yeah, we talk I mean, we, we need Ghanaians like you, you know? Um, it's easy to get distracted when, when we'll see all the trappings of being the US, there's this, there's that, there's this, you know? But to keep your focus, to, to think, let me go back and do something. What was the motivation for that decision? I think uh, the motivation, you know, from two main places. The, the primary place was uh, my own cousin, mm -hmm. uh, and who was also my elementary school classmate, mm -hmm. uh, called Adam. And Adam, when we were in elementary school, here was a girl who was just simply amazing. She was, you know, beasting me in the class, always coming on top, placing first and everything, back then. And many years later, when I ended up in Opokuari, I'll call home and then ask my parents. So I'm at Opokuari, it's Adam at some Louis or Porter girls mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. And they're like, no, Adam. Well, you left elementary school. Her parents also pulled her out. Oh, wow. Because, you know, in the village, who, see, who cares about? She'll go, uh, and so that, that hit me a lot. Mm. If someone who was topping me mm. is, mm. Is, is now back there, and mm. now Adon has three daughters that, you know, she's, she isn't able to, you know, fully take care of because, you know, she's in the village. All that she does is farm, and she's a teenage mother, same age. You know, and so that got me thinking, if I, who was being taught, you know, someone yeah. was doing better than me, yeah. could go that far, yeah. how far could have Adam gone? Yeah. I thought about it. You wow. know, there are so many Adams, then Adam's case is not really unique. Yep. So many of her yep. kind in the village, yeah, more so many like of her, her kind than, in, yeah. in so many rural areas. That was the first thing. The second thing was really understanding that the opportunity that I have had wasn't unique to me. Any other guy or any other child in my village could have had that chance. So what am I doing with it? Mm. So that was my prayer every day. Every day I would pray, God, use me. I, I want to live a life of service. I ultimately want to become a physician, but whatever your timeline for my life is, let it be so. And so it's really amazing when you think about it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. to be the yeah. only black and then to be the first black and then the first African to actually win that award. Win that award. You know, it was pretty mind-blowing, but that is wow. the doing of the Lord. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Put your hands together, man. This is totally, totally inspiring, man. Totally inspiring, you know, from the Cabra, my poor background, yeah. rural area, and then go and win the President Awards and bring it back. God bless you. That's all I can say. God very, bless you, Very, too. very fantastic <laughs> story. And I know you're doing back there, and um, you have a big... A conference coming up. Tell me a little bit about because there are some big shots coming to that conference. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember like co about, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we met on the, uh, the flight back to Ghana. And I mean, for me, I thought I was just coming back to, you know, actually focus on, because we are, we are opening a girls' school and a, a medical uh, facility in the village. And we are planning to actually open the girls' school this uh, October. Mm -hmm. So my goal was to come and, you know, pay a lot of attention to making sure we are starting. And then I came and then before I realized, the Clinton family had sent me an email saying that we need you to come back. And I was like, God, you know, sometimes you surprise me, but hey, mm -hmm. <laughs> who am I? Mm -hmm. I? I just have to follow your, 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 your orders. So thankfully, the Clinton Foundation 
you know, President Bill Clinton and you know, his family. They are going to be hosting the annual Clinton Global Initiative uh, meeting in New York. Mm -hmm. And I, well, I initially said, maybe yeah, I don't have to go. And then God said, you know, go check out the website and look at the list of speakers. There are some people I want you to meet. And then I went there, and then there's Dan Gute, there's the president of Argentina, president of Cisco, Intel, like all these big-time people. I said, well, guess what? Village boy, Takwabe, man. This is your time to share. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, so I'm, I'm very, very glad. And keep me informed what happens at the meeting, because I know, I know the, the, the breaks that you're having uh, have just started. The best is yet to come. Yeah, and I mean, uh, all this is due to, you know, the supportive people in my life who make this possible. Mm -hmm. The mentors that mm -hmm. I have at mm -hmm. the University of Pennsylvania, the mm -hmm. people who have believed in me. Think about my, my teachers back at Opukuari, who, who, I don't know, I wasn't their child. They could have chosen not to care. They but went they out of their way to care that much for me to be where I am now. All the way back to my elementary school. And also, on this project, which I'm working on, my amazing, amazing team. So yeah. uh, when I won the prize, I couldn't do it alone. Mm -hmm. There was a team behind you. I yeah. had four amazing guys. You know, mm -hmm. these guys could have said, well, you graduated from Opokuari. We went to SOS and GIS, and then we now have these Ivy League degrees. Why should we quit everything and follow you to your village? It's your village, after all. But you know, they understood that we're all young Ghanaians. It's time for us to, if we talk about the change we want to see in our country, we have to be the ones to lead it. Yeah, and so big it. shout out to Jacob Mould, um, uh, Maxwell Century Taylor, um, Julian Addo, Isaac Opuku, and then our young professionals board, the entire board of directors and then advisory board members. And everyone who, who is out there and believes in young people like me, um, what I would say is that let us not you know, uh, give up on the young people that we see on the streets. We should give them a chance. A few years ago, I was there, and I believe uh, any yeah. child on there too has a potential. Yeah. Fantastic. A few years ago, you were selling handkerchiefs and people. Yeah. The eyes were there. Yeah. Today, there you are. <laughs> Folks, this is so inspiring, man. This is so, so inspiring. It gives me hope that something will happen positively. Stick around. Coming up, we're going to be talking and having a chat to, with uh, Mr. Patrick Weir, who is also another very inspiring Ghanaian who now runs one of the best universities in this world, Ashes University. Stick around, we'll be right back. If you reach for that remote, I will bite you. The KSM Show will be right back. ASM show.